possible, all right, to understand what we're talking about. So can I drop back again for those who are just joining us? Now listen, in the last couple of weeks, we began a series called The Currency Called Character. And today we will be sharing what I titled the part three edition of The Currency Called Character. So I want to officially welcome you all to today's episode of Mind Shift Programming. My name is Tonita Samo. And it's my pleasure all the time, any time in a day, to stand right in front of this camera, to share with you in the studio, to also uh, give what I believe is uh, a borrowed knowledge because I learn from a lot of components, resources, and people to also share with you what I know and what I believe is helping me become the best that I can be. All right, so today we are continuing on that series of the currency called character, and I, I, I've been able to explain to you why I broke it down to letting you know that character has the same capacity or the same value that your dollar bill, your rand bill, your naira bill, or whatever bill, whatever currency that you spend in your country has. That a good character has the same potent, the same potential, the same value in the marketplace. Yes, you can say to me. I mean, you want to buy a Rolls Royce and it's about three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars. Are you saying to me that a good character can buy me that if I go to the marketplace? I can say absolutely that. Some people have gotten the private jet free of charge, given to them. Why? Good character, good lifestyle, good conduct, good impact in people's life. All right. So it is absolutely possible that you can get anything. People have seen. People have seen people who who gave people mansions houses worth millions of dollars just in in appreciation or just to say thank you just to say i respect you i honor you and i don't know how i can appreciate you but this is all i've got just take this you've been such a blessing to my life you've been such an inspiration to my life you know so i'm saying to you that good character has even more value than the dollar bill you carry in your pocket yes i can say that to you and i started to un unpack why character can be compared to what currency in the sense that in every currency it begins with what a note all right or a coin now but we're dealing with a note today now you take a note the note is the paper now that paper is your personality so whenever you appear what we'll see is a paper your person and when you appear the next thing people do is they run you through a mercury light and what are they looking at for the components that define if you are legal tender, if you are real? All right. So people begin to look out for the logos, the signature, the banknotes, the the currency number, every details that is required, the security codes, every detail that is required, the seals on that currency, every detail that is required to making that currency real is a look out for, and it is the same way that the society view you and I at every given moment you and i are also viewed from the lens of the mercury light and what are people truly looking out for they're looking out for who we are and how we've appeared and trying to decipher or decode if you and i are real people or we're just fake people all right so today and like i said yesterday we began to unpack those real components that people look out for and i mentioned about five yesterday because we're on a journey to unpacking about 20 components that makes my character worthy currency that can buy any content for me in the marketplace and number one yesterday was integrity we talked about integrity and we said integrity is not just having strong moral principle or core values but it's also conducting yourself in alignment with those moral principles that you've got how funny is it that you call yourself a clergyman and you teach people do not sleep do not uh, sleep with another man's wife do not communicate fornication do not steal but you indulge in all of these activities then that means you don't have integrity <laughs> all right so it's it's not just about you teaching it is not just about you having or knowing them it's about you doing them living them conducting your life to be styled by these moral principles of yours that is what integrity is we talked about integrity we talked about honesty and we said that honesty is not about telling the truth but it's about living the truth we talked about loyalty we talked about faithfulness being faithful devoted to a team to a cause to a person to a relationship to yourself all right 
And we also talked about respectfulness. And we talked about respectfulness, that respectfulness begins with you knowing what to do, that the respect you accord to yourself, that it's a custom way you respect yourself and you also accord the same manner or measure of respect to other people. And from respectfulness, we also delved into what we call responsibility. And we've got to understand that responsibility, it's about your understanding and learning how to take responsible act, being committed to a cause and also making yourself accountable to that cause. That was how you and I came up about the five components so far that we've discussed in this journey of understanding what it is to creating a character that is a currency that has the same capacity that my hundred dollar bill will always always have. Now today we are going to be continuing on that series. And the next part we are going to be discussing this morning is what I have titled this morning. What I have titled this morning, the next series. And we will be kicking off exactly right now with the next point of, of my list of components. And we will be talking about humility. Now, I just need to sort out one or two things in the studio. And I'll be right back. All right, got it. So, sorted out. Beg your pardon for that. So... Now today we'll be talking about humility and of course like I said responsibility is that you learn to accept personal relation or career community and social obligation even when they are difficult or uncomfortable. Now you must also learn to follow through the commitment that you have and always proactively create or accept accountability. Now the greatest problem we have in our society today is a lot of leaders I've started to see themselves as not being accountable to people that lead. Now, that already tells me that you are an irresponsible person. Now, once you see yourself bigger than this law, bigger than the system, bigger than the organization, bigger than whatever code of conduct that binds a, 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 your cause, your society, your organization, or the group that you belong to, it already tells me that you are nothing but an irresponsible person. All right? So... If you are responsible, it is your core duty to always learn to make yourself accountable. Now today I'm going to be talking about another three or perhaps we might drive it up to five new components that must be added to our dollar bill, to our currency bill called character that is going to help us become better people, that is going to help us build a lifestyle that can make me buy things without money and have things without me having to exchange monetary value but character can indeed give them to me without me even asking for it. And of course, good character can open any great door for you. Now today, that brings me to one of the keys that helps open doors for you. It is called humility. Yes. Now humility is you having a confident yet modest opinion of your own self-importance. Don't forget, I just mentioned that the fact that you're a humble person doesn't mean you're a stupid person. It doesn't mean that you're... Uh, humility is taken for stupidity or your simplicity is taken for stupidity. No. Now, you have a confident but yet modest opinion about yourself, your own self-importance. Now, you do not see yourself as too good for other people or situations. Now, are you understanding? I needed to pick up this line. There is confidence. There is modest opinion of your own self-importance. Now, you also do not see yourself too good or better than others. All right? Or better than others because of the kind of situation they find themselves. Now you have a learning and a growth mindset. And a desire to express and experience gratitude for what you have rather than expecting your, you deserve more. Now this is one of the greatest things. Now so how do you tell someone is humble? Now for me the way I tell somebody is humble is when I see a grateful person. That at whatever state of life they find themselves, at whatever given condition that they find themselves, they have this consciousness of saying to themselves that I am grateful for where I am today. I am grateful for what I've attained today. I am grateful for what life has given to me. I am grateful for the opportunity life has given to me. Though I am desiring to have more, but do, it, do not put their desire ahead of their gratitude. Their want has never come in front of their appreciations. No. So, uh, an humble person, someone who you can say is humble in behavior, is someone who learns 
not to exalt himself more than others. People who do not see themselves above any other person. People who see themselves as not less but equal. The word is not seeing yourself less, but you're, the word is seeing yourself that you're not better than or better off than any other person that exists. Never you ever get into the space where you appear. Because when you are passed through that mercury light of life, where humans will always judge you and create an opinion, form a perception of you, it is based on the repetition that has been formed from your character, from your behavior that you have displayed. So never you come up with a mindset that you're better off, that you're well off, because once you do that, the definition people are going to have about you is simply that you are not humble. And once people begin to see you in that light, do you know what that is? It simply means that nobody will ever give you regard anymore. Okay? So now, let's come back to the next part that of what we're going to be discussing now. We've talked on humility. Today, I will also be talking about compassion. And I think I might be rounding up this segment of mindset programming on this episode of compassion. Why? Because this is the greatest place where the world is missing out a lot today. Now, the opposite of humility, of course, we all say is pride. But my question is, what really drives pride? Greed is what drives pride in human. And whenever there is greed, anytime, any day, trust me, that is going to drive a consciousness of trouble, greed, and persecution amongst human. Then we'll begin to strive. Wherever there is pride, there is strife. And that is what takes away what the world is supposed to possess as a culture. Now, the culture of humility is what I want to bring us into. And as we discuss humility, if someone who does not have compassion can never understand what humility is about. So, just give me some moment. I will be right back and we will come to discuss what compassion is about. Alright, yes, we are back. Sorry for those glitches. This was just internal studio glitches happening. Alright, coming back to where we stopped. <laughs> um, like I said, right now we are back to what it is. What exactly is compassion? Like I said to you, I might be wrapping up because I have just limited time. But I might be wrapping up on this episode of compassion. What exactly is compassion? Now, compassion is the ability that you feel deep sympathy and pity for the suffering and the misfortune of others. Now, I can say to you that we live in a world today where people can, without thinking, would laugh at people who are going through tough times. People will open their mouth to say, yes, I thought they were being arrogant. Now they are going through some misfortunes. So that's their headache. All right? Now, the lack of compassion is what has brought the world to where it is today. That's where has brought the world to where it is today. So if you do not have compassion, then there is something wrong with your character. That currency ca character that you're trying to build will never be tenable in any store of life. Like I said, now, uh, the fact that you feel a very deep sympathy and pity for the suffering and misfortune of others helps you or puts you in a state where you have compassion. Now, and I said to you that that's what the world lacks today. The world lacks that place where we have compassion and feel for the sufferings that others are going through. And you have a very desire to do something to alleviate their suffering. All right, so it's key that you must learn one thing, that if you must be someone who will impact life, who will impress upon life, and help people become their very best, compassion is one of the greatest key you must have. In the book that I read, Jesus Christ once said, he, the Bible always said that he was moved with compassion, that he had compassion on people. So he did not do miracle because he wanted to show off that he's got the gift of miracle. He did miracle because he had compassion to helping people get out of the state of pain. He, he did miracle, he fed people not because he wanted to prove to them that he had wealth or that he could feed them and they were hungry people, no. He fed them because if he had a compassion, he had pity on them, he, he, could, he could fit into their space 
and understand that these people were going through a tough time and he had pity on them. Now, so I'm going to be signing off on this episode today while we continue the rest of the company in the mix, our character, a currency that we can tender in any marketplace of idea. Is the fact that without compassion, you and I can do nothing in this world. With the world can never move one step to the other. And the world is fast losing this component. And that's the reason why there is racism. That's the reason why there is nepotism. That's the reason why there is uh, uh, terrorism. That's the reason why there is every form of ethnic or racial or violence. You call it xenophobia, you call it whatever. The reason is because there is a lack of compassion. Now, I can imagine a country as blessed as the United States of America getting angry at people who come from one or two other African countries, maybe Somalia, into their country to say, now, there is hunger in Somalia right now. There is, there is deep famine, deep starvation going on in Somalia, in southern Sudan, in some part of East Africa. Now, so if peradventure somebody, some group of people can get out of that system, and trying to find greener pastures, find life, find livelihood in your own good country. And you're busy killing them. Like what is happening here in South Africa where the goal is you want every foreigner to get out of your country? Come on, guys. Can we love one another? Can we have pity? And understand that it is because things are good for us. That's why people are here. Because I, I've not seen anybody telling me they're going to South Sudan. I've not seen anybody telling me they're taking a trip trying to get a visa to Somalia. It is because things are good for us. And if we have humility and have that deep sense of gratitude and feel a sense of responsibility for others, we would not fight, we would not hate, we would not be hating. Rather, we will push ourselves into that state where we think we count and we think we have what it takes to impact lives and make people's life better than it is today. That's all I'm here to say to you. Compassion is a deep sense of sympathy and pity for the sufferings and the misfortunes of others. Look at people around you today and do me one favor. Can you quit and stop laughing at people when they have misfortunes? Because you, are, you, you may just be arming yourself. If what they go through today, if you are in their space, how would you feel? You, you've got staff members who are not the, at their best, who are sick, and you think they're lying because they don't want to work? No, 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 no. What if you were the one sick? How would you feel? All right? So this is where I want to leave my notes today to, with you. Now, so far, so good. We've been able to discuss seven components that makes our character great. And I want to believe that I've been able to impress upon you once again another element that makes your life better than it is, that makes you better than you are. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for giving me time to come into your space. I believe that this audio, this videos, this podcast, this broadcast, in one way are helping you become better than you are every day. Because it is my earnest desire that in every day, in every way, you and I get better and we get better and become better and better. It is in my word every day, my goal every day, that nobody gets to listen to what we do and remain the same. That there's something about your life that is improved. All right. So thank you all for giving us time once again. This is how we sign out on today's episode of Mindshift Programming. It's about exactly 10.40 a.m. here in Central Africa. But once again, I want to officially welcome you all and invite you to go right now and register for Business Reposition Expo 2017 March Edition, which is the beginning of our Masterclass Series. Seat is running out. I said yesterday, well... Quite a number of people registered already and materials are ready. We are set. So I need you to come in your plenty because we are here to make Africa great again. But Africa's greatness lies in the lives and in the hands of every African. You are one of us. Let's do this. Let's build and elevate and create a system where every African child is blessed, prosperous with the ideas and the mindset and the potential that God has given everyone of us. Thank you for giving me time again. God bless you. Till we meet again tomorrow here on One Voice Radio. Stay blessed and always be the best that you can be. Bye.
I go eat. I just finished now. Sorry, let me unlock the mic. Yes. <laughs>